Welcome to this week's edition of the Pete Mazzetti Show. I'm Pete Mazzetti. My guest this evening is Department of Revenue Services Commissioner Mark Boughton. Commissioner Boughton, welcome. Hey, How are you, my friend? I've been waiting forever to get on this show. <laughs> you have? I have. Well, welcome. Well, thanks for having me. How are it's you? exciting to be here and uh, nothing more exciting than taxes. Exactly. Well, we'll talk, we'll, talk, we'll talk about taxes. And I understand I have to address you as either Mark, Commissioner, or Mr. Mayor. Pick your title. All right. <laughs> Whatever works for you, but Mark works pretty good. There too. you go. Well, Mark, tell us a little bit about your background and how you became Department of Revenue Services Commissioner. Sure. Well, I was born and raised in the city of Danbury, educated in Danbury Public Schools. Um, I attended Central Connecticut State University and earned a bachelor's degree there and earned a master's degree at Western Connecticut State University. Did a little stint in the military yep. uh, in there as well. and. Um, I uh, was involved in my community from the get-go. I, I taught high school at Danbury High School for many years and uh, ended up getting involved locally uh, in politics, but more on a volunteer basis and ended up running for state representative back in the late 90s, won. In fact, I, I, I came right. in in 1998 with a lot of people that we know and right. served there for two terms. And then the mayor of Danbury job became available. The current uh -huh. mayor at that time was stepping down and everybody bugged me to run and I wasn't gonna run because <laughs> I'm a Republican. Republicans never win. That you know, it's a Democratic city, and right. I ended up running and, and winning and, and served there for 20 years oh, and wow. uh, uh, 10 terms, and it was a great, great job. Loved it, but you know, I always wanted to serve uh, our state uh, any way that I could, and have been friendly with Gover Governor Lamont for for decades. And uh, okay. he uh, called and asked if I would be willing to take on this role, and I really thought about it. I mean, I really spent months deciding whether I was going to do this, and in the end, decided I would. Um, what I admire about Governor Lamont is that he uh, is a Democrat, I'm a Republican. Right. I said, I'm not changing parties. He said, I don't want you to. <laughs> right. He said, I, I want to hear from all corners. I, I want all ideas at the table. And I think that's really something admirable that uh, he does. He's a great leader. He lets you speak your mind. Doesn't always agree with it. We don't always agree, but we are <laughs> right. uh, always agree on the mission of what we have to do. And uh, it's an honor to work for him and his administration. Now, how long have you been commissioner? So I was appointed in December of 2020, okay. and I'll be coming up on two years uh, right. this December. And uh, it's been everything I thought it was. Great staff, fantastic uh, yeah. senior staff that's there. And it's a great agency, kind of undersung. People don't really know how good they are. Um, nobody wants to pay their taxes. You know, I, I get that. doesn't make <laughs> me a popular fella. But uh, at the end of the day, uh, we collect uh, $22 billion in taxes a year, over 44 different categories. and. Uh, I'm proud to, to be able to work with them. Wow. 22 over 40 for category. Okay. Yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> big big learning curve. Oh, absolutely. I had a little bit of background in go government, thankfully, and, and knew the general tax scheme that we have. Title 12 uh, yep. is a section of the Connecticut General Statutes, and um, it's still very confusing and overlapping and takes a lot of work, but uh, we, we figured it out for you. Absolutely. And now, as far as how close do you guys work with the governor's office? Uh, I'm a direct report to the governor, okay. so um, you know I, I talk to him on a weekly uh, basis and uh, generally about uh, the direction of revenue that we're receiving, where what categories they see up, what categories they see down, um, and then of course we develop plans and initiatives for the oncoming legislative agenda. So between all those things, um, you know we we do meet a lot and discuss a lot of that. And then I have this other role I was telling you about. So yeah, that's right. He, he we'll appointed me too. as a senior advisor to the governor on infrastructure, so yeah. I'm responsible for the implementation of the bipartisan infrastructure law passed in November. So I travel around the state doing that. I've been up here in, in eastern Connecticut a ton looking at projects, particularly here along the shoreline, and yeah. working uh, those communities and the state uh, to be able to ex get the money in and execute the project and uh, uh, get that done for Connecticut. So that's an honor as well. Does keep me busy though. I mean, my phone doesn't stop ringing. So no. uh, between the two jobs, uh, I've got a full plate. Absolutely. Now let's talk about the infrastructure program and exactly what it entails and exactly what you do as far as the infrastructure hat that you wear. Sure. My job is to uh, make sure that um, our agencies are, let me just be clear with the prefix that sure. they do work together. Absolutely. But things sometimes get hung up between agencies. They, uh, yeah. you know, so my job is to keep things moving, making sure that there are applications are going on time, that we're applying for the right grants, that we've identified the right grants that, right grants that are available to uh, the state. And also to work with cities and towns, mayors and first selectmen across right. the state, uh, other stakeholders like our uh, uh, MPOs, those are the metropolitan 
uh, planning organizations, as well as our COGS, our Council of Governments, yeah. uh, and CCM, people Absolutely. like people Absolutely. Joe DeLong, and right. COST, the Connecticut the Organization of Small Towns, yeah. um, and our federal uh, lawmakers, uh, uh, Congressman Courtney, for Absolutely. example, and Senator, Senator, Senator Murphy and Senator Blumenthal. Yeah. So basically, I try to pull all those folks together, then look at all of the laws that have been put in place by our Congress and mm -hmm. signed by our President, and try to get those to be executed here in Connecticut, to get the grants, to get the money, and to actually do the job. So it's a lot of work. Uh, There's just a lot of what we call guidance around each program. There's over 370 grants, uh, encompassing about $6 billion of money that will be coming to the state over the next five years. And i got to make sure it all gets deployed the right way. Absolutely. And uh, fortunately, we have great uh, organizations like DOT and, and mm -hmm. like DEEP, and, uh, those folks and they they know what they're doing so i just kind of get out of the way provide the back uh, stopping for them the support that they need and make sure that our cities and towns are aware of what's available to them remember some of these small towns Pete, they don't they don't have grant writers they don't have town no. planners they don't have engineers so we kind of fill that gap for them and say hey did you know you might be able to get five million dollars to repair this beach right. um, but you got to get this paperwork on time and it's due october one exactly or, so that's what we do work closely with cities and towns to try to make sure that they're accessing all the money that they should be. Absolutely. So I, as a matter of fact, you mentioned local mayors, local first selectmen, and town managers, the town that I live in, we actually had a, we have a town manager now, before that we had a board of selectmen. Okay. And, and what, first town, what town is that be? Clinton. Clinton. No Clinton well. Um, yeah, so we, we have met with their council of governments out here. In fact, I wrote out here mm, probably three or four months, uh, three or four weeks ago, oh, okay. and sat down with them, explained our program and how it's operating. And um, we have uh, people all over Connecticut that yeah. are reporting into us and, and what what the needs are of our communities. Now, typically, when you think infrastructure, you think roads, bridges, things like that, right? Yeah, sure. But it also encompasses things like broadband, right? Making sure that every home has access to high speed internet. That's part of my mandate, so okay. we're working on that right now. Uh, it's electronic vehicles, electric vehicles, right. and making sure we have the EV, the charging stations located up and down the 95, mm -hmm. 84 corridor, yeah. and eventually that we penetrate into cities and towns. Um, we have to have a plan to do that. So DOT just completed our, our master plan and submitted that. Um, all this stuff comes together, and it's not always just, you know, paving a road or putting in a new intersection, right. although there's that too, right? right. So um, it really is an interesting job in that sense. Absolutely. And actually, Commissioner Gilletti will be here in a couple of weeks. He's fantastic. Oh, he's awesome. Yeah, he, he's a he's good been. guy. We're lucky to have him. Yeah. Uh, I will tell you that Joe Gilletti has, is probably one of the nation's foremost experts on rail. Oh, little, yeah. little known fact. And um, he uh, just knows everybody and anybody in that industry, Absolutely. nationally and internationally. Yeah. Um, so uh, Governor Lamont was really smart to get him on board. Joe's a, a good guy. I actually lived, uh, I live in Danbury, he lived in Putnam County, which is right across the line yep. there, and uh, we've known each other for a long time, and um, we're lucky again to have him at the helm, and uh, he's doing a great job. Absolutely. Now, how did you guys in your agency handle the pandemic when it first started as to where we are now? Yeah, so I came on board in December, and at that point, most of the protocols were put in place. Right. Remember, the uh, pandemic kind of mm -hmm. blew up, if you will, in March, April, May. Oh, yeah. Um, so we just continued on uh, the program that had already been put in place by uh, DAS, the Department of Administrative Services in yep. the state. Essentially, um, we're still on a hybrid program. Uh, the great thing about DRS, though, is I can tell you if somebody's working. Yeah, right. Because they're not collecting the money. Right. So yeah. it, we've been able to pinpoint folks that maybe aren't doing what they should be doing. Mm -hmm. um, generally, it's about 80 to 90 percent uh, telework, the balance they have to come in. For me personally, I do, my senior staff, uh, we have an all-hands meeting every Wednesday all morning at DRS. We're in the building then, and we're in intermittently throughout the week. Uh, and Monday mornings, uh, we meet at 9.30 a.m. to talk about what's coming up in the week and what we have to do. Um, we do have a number of important programs on the tax side yeah, that we're rolling out. Yeah, it. One of them is our uh, C-Tax program, which will allow you to do all of your taxes online. And our, it's been a series of rollouts we've done yep. of each tax. Remember I mentioned that 44 yeah. different taxes. So September next month is yep. personal income tax. That's the biggie. That's the mother of all taxes. Yeah. That's one that has a lot of uh, impact to our residents out there. They're going to, you know, because most people pay income tax. Even if you get a refund, mm -hmm. you still got to exactly. file. Exactly. And, and we're going to ask that you do that electronically going forward. And also the folks that prepare the taxes. These right. are the accountants and 
uh, tax preparation services. So we're not nervous, but have some anxiety to make sure that it goes right. right. This is a new program. Um, CTAX is a state-of-the-art uh, program that allows us also to identify fraud, uh, right. which is great. We, you know, we do that now, but we do it by hand. Yeah. Now we'll be able to do that through the software package that's included with that. Um, so we're working hard. I mean, that's, this has been a, you know all hands on thing for the last six weeks as we get ready to implement this next module. I think it'll go well though, and uh, there's gonna be hiccups. Yeah, But absolutely. you know, we're starting in September because the filing period starts in January, as That's you right. know. So um, we're working hard on that. The other thing I'm excited about is I'm in the process of developing an analytical unit. It's called okay. the Revenue Analytics and Forecasting Unit within DRS. This is a, a team of about six employees that will, uh, new employees, new hires that we're gonna be doing, right. um, that are gonna do nothing but spend their time looking at what other states are doing analyzing the analytics that we have off of CTAX, it'll be generated by this new software package, and determine where is the best place to, to recover what we call the tax gap. In Connecticut, in any state, there's a, something called the tax gap, which compromises, in my estimation for Connecticut, it's about 40%. The state of Connecticut does not collect about 40% of the taxes that are due to them. Okay. That doesn't mean that everybody's beating the state of that exactly. 40%. They may not be paying their fair share, their full share, their full liability, so this unit's gonna be able to tell me, listen, this year we need to do more audits in sales tax. Because right. we know sales tax is the number one area that we get beat on in terms of people not paying or complying mm -hmm. and paying um, their liability. So that's gonna help us do that. But it's also gonna look visionary forward, right? This unit is gonna say, and this team is gonna tell me, look, Commissioner, we're installing all these electric chargers. Yeah. That means we're gonna have all these electric cars. That means we're not gonna be collecting gas tax anymore because people are gonna be using electricity. Exactly. So here's how, we're, how much we're gonna need to keep the uh, special transportation fund going. Mm -hmm. Here's how we're gonna, here's some tax schemes that are out there working that are different than a gas tax and provide those kinds of answers and options. So there are a lot of different things that, that I'm very excited about. And then finally, it'll be state of the art catching fraud. And that's one of our biggest issues is being able to catch. There are people out there, preparers, mm -hmm. that are, are unscrupulous that may try to, we just caught one that was trying to send in probably 50 refunds of about the same amount. Well, that threw a flag and yeah. thankfully somebody nodded and picked that up and we, we actually caught them. Right. Now we have an investigation team of about 20 sworn police officers, they're actually state uh, folks that um, are licensed to carry handguns and the whole bit, wow. and they do full-blown investigations of people that we think are, are cheating the state. But if we do the RAF unit right, that, that analytics unit right, we won't need as much investigative work. We'll be able to get ahead of it and know where people are beating the system. We'll also talk to other states. Yeah. I mean, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, uh, New York have a ton of data and so while we can't, I can't tell everybody what Pete Mazzetti's paying. Exactly. I'm, I'm prohibited by law. Right. You know, from telling people what you make and what you pay. Yeah. I will be able to see where you're paying. Exactly. And that's going to be really important as the economy keeps changing. Think about it. We did all of these online sales. People yep. buy Amazon. They buy, you know, I buy, I order from Macy's now. I go right out the catalog. I don't have to go in. Exactly. If we didn't have or were able to take that evolution to charging tax. There were years where we never collected sales tax on, on Amazon. We do now yeah, right. because of the Wayfair decision, but that went on for five or six years. So we can't wait that long. I mean, no. there's money out there, technology changes, we gotta make sure we're getting all everything. And now if you're out there and watching this, you say, I don't like that, it's too intrusive. All this guy wants is more taxes. No, 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 I want less taxes. If we collect everything that we're supposed to, mm -hmm. we won't need to increase taxes. We no. can pay down our pension funds and our pension debt. We can pay our long-term obligations, and we're not going to have to go back and ask for a greater contribution. So if I can narrow that tax gap by about 20%, mm -hmm. that's about a billion and a half dollars, $2 billion of money that we can bring in that we're not going to have to get from the taxpayers. These are people that already owe it and for whatever reason aren't paying it. And look, we all know there's an underground economy. We Absolutely. all know people pay cash and things, mm -hmm. and we all know that you know it's important that we are able to identify where that's happening, and that's what this unit's gonna do for us. So right. for that little expenditure of with salaries and everything, a little bit less than a million bucks, all right. I'm gonna bring in $40 million the first year we're out rolling. There you go. Commissioner, would you like to stick around for another segment? Whatever you'd like to do. All right, we'll be right back. You matter. You matter. You matter. And your words matter too. Your words matter. What you say in the hallways at school or in the student section at a game matters. Words can be hurtful. Words can be offensive. Words can leave scars. Words can also inspire. 
support, and uplift. You and your words. Are they both important? As a matter matter of fact, fact, yes. yes. Community TV, your neighborhood TV. Publicly funded and a reliable partner for cable companies nationwide. It provides transparent coverage of local and state government, education, and public programming. A digital town green that can be watched anywhere, anytime, and on any device. Watch us on today's high-tech distribution methods. Community TV in Connecticut. Local. Unfiltered. Reliable. And and yours. yours. Welcome back to this week's edition of the Pete Mazzetti Show. I'm Pete Mazzetti sitting here with DRS Commissioner Mark Boughton. Commissioner Boughton, welcome back. Thanks, Pete. It's great to be here. Thanks. So, Commissioner Boughton, we were talking a little bit in the first segment about your agency and what exactly you guys do and all the different different programs, programs and, and sure. maybe we can talk a little bit about more of the different programs in detail to open up this segment. Sure. All right. So, um, we were talking about the analytics unit we're doing. We're currently getting ready to roll out this new uh, online system. Yeah. Um, which, so there's two pieces of this. There's a front piece where you see it on your computer and yep. you're putting in your information. The back piece is even more important, right? Ah. So again, there's decisions that are made off of what's, what categories of taxes are coming in, why they're coming in. So we have not replaced the back end system, uh, probably 20 years, 25 Ooh. years. So this is the next evolution. This is okay. great software. It costs the whole implementation is about sixty million dollars. Oh. So uh, the important thing to this, though, is uh, again it'll make us more efficient. So right. that sixty million dollars is going to get you one hundred eighty million dollars in, in lost revenue that we just All didn't right. collect for whatever reason. So it's important that um, we we uh, get this done and get it right. But it's been a project, but it's been interesting. I'm not a software guy, no. so a lot of times when I sit down with these folks, uh, <laughs> particularly uh, in our, our IT department, they talk a lot of language that I don't understand after oh, stopping them, but I think I finally got the hang of it. So, there you go. Yeah, and it's, it's actually pretty easy to use. And here's the big picture, right? Yeah. The big picture is, and I've been talking to the governor about this, is eventually through MyConnect, that's the portal that you will mm-hmm. go to, you'll be able to connect with all operations of your state profile. So you'll have okay. your picture, just like, and you'll have your account. You'll be able to redo your driver's license, get your boat certification or license or whatever you need, pay your taxes, pay any permits or fees that you need, get any license that you need, all that will be part of your uh, information that you'll be able to go right in and access that'll be under lock and key by the state. Um, We actually have a very robust uh, uh, protection system for people accessing our data, so if you're worried about that out there, don't worry. I can't even get my email, my state email, on my phone because we're concerned that somebody might hack into my phone and through that, be able to go in and get after your your social security numbers, that kind of thing. So um, we'll be able to do it right, but I love this concept of you having an account and making it easy. Then we will notify you, hey, time for your your motor vehicle, time for your driver's license to be updated. Hey, motor vehicle registration's due uh, in about a year or six months, whatever, and just tickle people so that they don't have to go through the aggravation of going into the DMV, for exactly. example, which, by the way, has gotten a lot better. Oh, absolutely. It's gotten much better. <laughs> absolutely. You can make appointments now online and things like that, but you don't have to stand there with a number and wait to be called up. Exactly. You can do all that from your laptop or eventually from your phone. Right. And so uh, I'm excited about that, and uh, we're working on that right now as we speak. It's going to be a while before something like that rolls out, but that's all part of this, right? That's all this, is, all mm-hmm. this stuff is interchangeable in our different agencies, so we're excited. What else? Well, uh, beyond that, um, we've got a number of studies to do. So okay. the legislature gave us a lot of homework, and oh, good. we're doing those studies now. Um, one of them is um, I have a, an idea, and we, this is a common practice in local government. If you're involved in local government, you know that we do this. Um, I want to sell. We have about a billion dollars in outstanding liabilities, so a money that people owe the state that they never paid. Okay. Now, we have tried like crazy to collect it. So before you say, well, why don't you just go collect it, we can't. If we thought we could, we would have gotten there already, right? Uh, yeah. So this is people that potentially moved out of state, right? And maybe they're living in California, and they're like, you know what? I ain't paying Connecticut. I live in California, so right. it doesn't pay for me to send somebody out there for a fifty-dollar auto tax bill, right, yeah. or, or anything like that. So what I want to do is bundle that up, and I want to sell that debt, right? Just sell it to a third party mm-hmm. that will take it, and they can make deals on it. Maybe if you owe them $100 and you're living in Florida, they'll say, well, pay me 50 and we'll, you're done. Right. I, I don't have the authority to do that under our statutes, yeah. but if I can sell it, they would. So the legislature likes the idea, but they want to hear a little bit more and okay. they want to see an operational plan. 
I've actually talked to some investors on the other side who do this. Okay. I did this in Danbury. I sold any outstanding tax debt, whether it be uh, personal property or auto tax, yep. we would sell it. I get dollar for dollar for it. So if you owe Danbury $200, I would get $200 on that sale. So our collection rate in Danbury was one of the reasons why I got this job, 99.9%. Mm -hmm. There you go. Rarely got beat on taxes, right? And the public liked it, because now they knew everybody was paying, right? And then when, you, when you know everybody's paying a fair share, you feel better about investing in the system. So uh, that, I think, can reap us a substantial re return in the order of magnitude between four to $600 million, mm -hmm. which I'm talking to the legislature about how to spend that and where to spend it. And I think they ought to spend it in one-time programs um, versus you know, ongoing programs that right. will have to be funded. Um, but it's exciting. We're all, so I'm doing a study on that. I'm also doing a study on uh, the tax gap that we talked about earlier yeah. and how best to close that. And I think I've got some ideas uh, to be able to do that by using this new uh, uh, group that I'm putting, this new team I'm putting together. Um, so they, but they want to see a study on that. And then we're looking at the impact of people moving out of Connecticut and coming into Connecticut. You right. hear a lot about that right now. Absolutely. And, you know, people are going to Florida, they're going here. Um, and it's, but we don't have any real good data. I don't have any good, I can't sit there and tell you that, you know, 30% of the people who left last year took 40% of the income or anything like that. So I want to be able to share real data that legislators and the governor uh, and uh, our state centers, all those folks can, can make policy decisions on, right? So it's really hard for me to say, if you raise taxes on the wealthy, the income tax on the wealthy, they're gonna leave. Yeah. Because I got no data to show right. that. Now we <laughs> right. know that happens, because you always hear the anecdotal stories, right? I mean, I was yeah. just down at the gas station about a week ago, and I saw a buddy of mine filling up his car with a U-Haul, and I said, oh, you know, Joe, you're going on vacation? He goes, nope, I'm leaving, I'm selling, you know, and I'm, I'm leaving. So it does happen, right, right for, for a low tax state. Uh, there's been studies done, but there are people, there's somebody taking Joe's spot here in Connecticut. Right. So what's that impact? Exactly. You know, and, and what's the trade-off that we're experiencing? And those are things I just can't tell you now because I don't collect enough, enough data. So what are you going to see in the next round of tax collection when you get that form or your accountant does? Yep. We're going to start asking some questions. We're going to start talking about uh, how many kids do you have at home? That kind of stuff. So I can start pulling this data together, not because I'm trying to be intrusive, right. but because I'm trying to be able to lower your tax burden. If I get the right information, I can do that. Um, in addition to that, we got a number of programs that we're rolling out. Today, the governor announced that uh, we have a hospitality grant that the DRS administers. I saw that on the news today briefly. About $35 million will be dispersed to, up to $15,000 will be dispersed to restaurants, hotels, folks that have been hit hard during COVID. This oh, absolutely. Is, this is uh, ARPA money that we're using that, and uh, trying to get that in the hands where it'll do some good, particularly as we roll, you know, we roll out of the um, we're not there yet. We're still at the height, really, of the tour season. But, you know, another month or two, kids are back at school. Everything slows down. We want people to make it through the winter. Um, we're also doing a child tax rebate. Those okay. checks will be up at the end of the month. Yep. I'm trying to hit the sales tax-free week for you. If, you. if you got one coming to you, we're working hard. 240,000 applications. It's a lot. So we're, we're wow. going through all that. We'll run, I run checks on those, and uh, you'll see my signature on the bottom. Okay. Um, so that'll be out there. And then... Um, later in the year, we have the Enhanced uh, Earned Income Tax Credit. It's another check that will go to those folks that get, uh, get the uh, Earned Income Tax Credit uh, for children, so mm -hmm. the EITC. So um, those are three sets of checks that we're running right now. A lot of work. I can't emphasize how much work <laughs> it is, partly because we don't have CTAX up and running. Once that's running, I'll be able to push a button and run checks for you. <laughs> a lot of people said to me, why don't we just send a check to you know, for the, connect, uh, the the child tax credit. And I go, nah. I can't, I don't have the information. <laughs> exactly. We go off of the adjusted gross income of right. your federal return. We don't see what deductions you took. No. I have no idea if you have kids at home. I have no idea, uh, you know, except for what you, you made, where your deductions came. So that's why I want some of that information. And then I can mail you a check and we don't have to ask you to fill out an application. Exactly, exactly. The funny thing was is back in December, January, I actually went on to CT Big List. Okay. Oh, you did. And you got money coming to you. I found my. I found. <laughs> one might say I found myself, and I went and filled out all my paperwork. Went to the town clerk's office in the town of Clinton because you had to have your notarized. documentation yeah, yeah. notarized. Yeah. I mailed everything in. The How next. Much? Uh, the next couple, like seventy-five bucks, but the next couple days, like. Three days later, there was a thing on the news. Hey, if you file if you file for with CT Big List now, you don't have to have your documents notarized anymore. I'm like, really? I'm like, 
Oh, I'm a commissioner man. and I had a hard time under the previous <laughs> system. Of get, I still got about 50 bucks there. Yeah. When I looked at the amount, I'm like, just keep it. I mean, exactly. By the time I file all the information, and I just didn't have time for it. So I know. Yeah, that's, right. It's, like, it's kind of cool. And, I, and I, I filed everything in February. I got my check last week. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, okay. Yeah, that system's... <laughs> it was under the auspices of the Treasury Office. Yep. Um, they wanted, actually, there was a movement to put it under me. And, <laughs> oh, really? Um, uh, yeah. You're like, no, nah, I don't want it. Uh, well, I, I, look, I, 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 I like our current Treasury's nice guy, and I, I yeah. think it was more he was just stuck with the bad statutes that he had to live by. So I, I, didn't, I, I don't really blame him for that. But it was just a cumbersome process. I mean, I, I have probably eight accounts on there. Go ahead, you can Google my name yeah, on there. Yeah, right. There, if you there guys you go, are watching, you'll, you'll, you'll see. We dare you. And I still haven't gotten it because it all adds up to about $38.12. <laughs> yeah, so right. I'm like, keep it all. I just, there you go. Well, Commissioner Boutman, we're about to run out of time, so I want to thank you for coming down. Thanks, B. I appreciate it. It's you good got to it. see you, man. Hopefully, all the best. we'll see you again soon. I expect to be on again. All right. And we're going to work on that special guest for you. You got it. Okay. On behalf of Mark Boutman, I'm Pete Mazzetti. Thanks, good night, and we'll see you next week.